Welcome to Tech Brothers with Amiru. In this video, we are going to learn what is a private endpoint, uh, how to create endpoint for Azure SQL database, uh, and finally, we are going to learn uh, how to access uh, Azure SQL database uh, from a VM, a virtual machine, uh, after creating a private endpoint. Uh, so, first of all, what is endpoint? Uh, here's the definition, and you can do tons of studies on that. Uh, I'm gonna just uh, uh, read the definition for you so it makes sense. Uh, Azure uh, Private Endpoint is the network interface uh, that connects you privately and securely to the service uh, powered by Azure Private Link. Uh, private Endpoint uses a private IP address uh, from your VNet, uh, effectively bringing the service uh, into your VNet. Uh, the service could be Azure service such as uh, Azure Storage, Azure Cosmos DB, or Azure uh, SQL Database, or your own private uh, link service. Uh, so that's a uh, very important what we have done, uh, what we are going to do, we are going to create uh, uh, a SQL uh, database uh, and then uh, uh, we are going to create the private endpoint uh, that will uh, do bring uh, that uh, database uh, into the our VNet uh, and then uh, we will be able to access uh, from the v, uh, from the virtual machine. So uh, we are going to experiment all those things uh, here. So first of all, I'm going to show you guys uh, what I have here. Uh, let's uh, refresh and uh, go to the resource group and uh, as of now what I have here I have uh, a VNet created and uh, then I have a VM created so first of all let's go to the VNet and uh, that's our virtual uh, network here and uh, in you you can see subnets here so only there is a default and there is a one VNet uh, that uh, I'm using for my VM so that's the VNet we are using for VM if I will go to my VM and uh, here if I will say IP config it will show me the IP it is using now so it is using 10.0.1.4 so that's the IP it is the uh, using okay so that's good let me move a little bit here and then come back to here so you know, from here it's using a uh, 10.0.1.4 that's the IP it is using from uh, this subnet all right, so we do not have any SQL database here. So I'm going to go ahead and create a SQL database here. So uh, SQL databases and here I'm going to go ahead and create one. And now it is asking you a subscription. It's asking you a resource group. So I'm going to provide the resource group here. It is asking you what is the name of the database. So I'm going to call this one a tech browser uh, IT. Okay. And then it's uh, asking a server name. So we are going to go ahead and create one so we will call that one tech brothers okay and uh, then uh, it is asking me hey you provide your username so i'm going to call this one tb user and password some strong password and it's going to be in east us so once uh, you do that uh, okay it's uh, containing lower cases let me see if that's the case that's all it is so tech brothers now all good hit okay Uh, it's uh, still, uh, I believe it's working. See right there, it's working. It is saying it's available, but just it's taken some time. The server name is available, fine. And uh, configuration database, and uh, here I'm gonna go to very, uh, we are not using uh, V cores and all that. So I'm gonna try, uh, go back here. It's uh, $380 here. So let me, click back here and uh, change the configuration and now I'm gonna cancel this one uh, I don't want to do this one because I just want to do DTU base purchase basic that's what I would like to do okay so now it's four dollar ninety nine cents for per month that's what I would like to do okay so let's go ahead and create so we did not provide any other information we are gonna keep everything as it is create your database there Okay, so it is uh, in the Microsoft.SQL servers. Uh, it is uh, creating this uh, tech resources uh, server, and then uh, it's going to create uh, other uh, resources for us. Uh, and finally, our tech resources IT database will be ready to connect. Uh, so our uh, resource is ready. We can go to the resource now, and uh, this is our SQL uh, database right there. So we can click here, and uh, I'm in uh, right here. That's our SQL. Uh, 
database uh, so you guys you can see right there that's uh, our name of the server if we would like to connect to that one I'm gonna copy this uh, there are multiple ways to connect to this uh, if I click here it's gonna show me the servers here and then I can go to the SQL databases and it's gonna show me the database so I have tech browser IT here I can go to query editor and then I can provide the password here and it should be connecting me okay so it is saying hey from this IP you are coming and that's not allowed to access so I can copy and add that IP to it so we can whitelist this IP to the uh, click here is uh, gonna add that IP to our firewall rules so if I go back to here on the server so let me go back to the server here cancel this out take presence here is our server and if I go to the firewall now this uh, IP should be added here you guys can see that uh, so that's my IP now if I'm not able to uh, I was not able to access that right so uh, this ID uh, IP is added now if I go to the query here go to the SQL databases and now if I go to access uh, this uh, uh, database I should be able to access uh, so I'm gonna go open a query and I'm gonna uh, provide my password here it's uh, uh, all good here and uh, now there is no table here I'm gonna go ahead and create a table UBO EMP and I'm gonna call this one ID integer name worker okay so table is created I'm gonna insert a row and then finally we are good to go select from dbo.mp so what I did uh, um, I created a table and uh, inserted row and we can select that row and uh, it should be under this uh, table so we can refresh and uh, we can see EMP table is there now that's very uh, that's normal like uh, okay so I added my IP and uh, by adding my IP I'm able to access uh, this uh, SQL uh, database but that's not really secure so if you want to go further and uh, what you want to do you want to uh, close all those uh, other services uh, that are that can access this uh, server so you can do that so if we will go to our uh, SQL server and uh, then take a look on the firewall and virtual networks uh, here uh, what we have uh, allow Azure services and resources to access this uh, server set to no and remember that uh, when we were trying to connect to the through the uh, by using the query it asked me hey you don't have access that and you would like to add that IP so we did add it that now my goal is uh, what I want to do I don't want to even use that one so my goal is uh, uh, want to create the private uh, endpoint uh, and uh, wherever uh, I have that private uh, endpoint uh, created uh, I would like to use that uh, so from that machine uh, here uh, that's uh, where our scenario is gonna play now if you guys remember that from the definition uh, uh, once we create the endpoint uh, you know private endpoint is gonna put uh, our uh, SQL uh, database in that uh, vnet uh, so that's our goal and uh, any machine uh, that is on the same uh, vnet uh, should be able to access that uh, sql uh, database uh, so in our case uh, what's uh, happening here i have a vnet here and uh, our, one of our virtual machine is using that uh, vnet so i'm going to go to vnet here and then uh, i'm going to create uh, a separate uh, subnet so see this vnet uh, is hosting uh, this uh, subnet uh, and uh, that is used by our virtual machine um, so I want to create another subnet uh, and then create the private uh, endpoint uh, so our uh, SQL database can be accessed uh, only from that uh, vnet so I'm gonna call that uh, Tech Brothers endpoint vnet uh, okay so or subnet so this uh, will be created uh, and then we will use that uh, in the creating the pro private endpoint uh, so now that is created and uh, what we are going to do here we are going to go to the our uh, server here that's our uh, uh, database server and here I'm going to go to the firewall and virtual network so so uh, that uh, is that's where we are going to go ahead and uh, create our uh, sorry we are gonna go right here in the private endpoints and create that so first of all let me show you one thing I have this uh, server name and if I go to my VM and uh, do NS 
lookup and paste it there. So what, what's happening? Uh, the IP address that you are seeing for this server, that's our uh, server for uh, right there. That's our server for uh, the SQL database. So, so you can see that the IP is coming in 10, uh, 40 .79 and 153 and all that. So by after creating uh, our uh, private endpoint, uh, uh, the IP, it should be coming from the same VNet. So same VNet is in, in 10 dot zero dot some uh, something like that, right? So with that we just created. Now we are gonna go to a private endpoint. We are gonna go ahead and create a new endpoint and here is asking uh, which subscription you would like to use uh, then which resource uh, and the uh, endpoint name so i'm going to call it uh, tb db uh, endpoint okay so and this is going to be in the same region uh, so east uh, us i'm going to go to the resource next uh, and here uh, i'm going to select the subscription uh, resource type uh, i'm going to type sql and uh, that's our uh, microsoft.sql servers and here is our resource name is the tech browser. That's our server name for our database. And our target sub resource is a SQL server. So we have selected that one. We are gonna to go to configuration. And here you are selecting the VNet in which you would like to place this endpoint. So your SQL database will be also in part of that. And here we have, remember, we have multiple subnets created. One for our VM, the other one is for our endpoint subnet. So I'm gonna use that one. But they are both belong to the same VNet. We are gonna leave this one as it is subscription yes and here i'm going to say okay yeah create a new uh, private uh, link database.windows.net uh, private dns zone for that one okay so now it's going to create that now you are going to hit create it should be created uh, and once it's created uh, and if i will go to the uh, our uh, right here if i will go to the VM and do the NS lookup. Now the IP should be changed from 40 something to the 10 dot uh, whatever the IP we have over in the VNet. So VNet subnet. Okay, so it is uh, uh, still working. Once it's created, so you guys can see. I'm gonna go to the VNets here, and now in the VNet, if I go to subnets here and the, the endpoint is uh, using a 10.0.2 so once uh, this is uh, created uh, it is going to assign one of the IP from this range so looking uh, it's still working on it and then uh, we should be able to connect uh, from our uh, virtual machine to the uh, SQL um, database as well by using uh, SSMS or by using uh, uh, Azure Data St uh, Studio so I'm just waiting for this one so finally our uh, private endpoint is uh, ready and uh, all done uh, now what we can do we can go to our uh, resource group and uh, here uh, we can go to our sql uh, server so once i go to sql server uh, now then we can go to the firewall uh, and the virtual machines here and you can see that uh, now this option is also highlighted uh, so deny public network access uh, because we have created the endpoint uh, and uh, it is giving us all that option uh, so we can say deny public network access yes and uh, um, that's uh, we save it so now if uh, somebody try to access this uh, server from anywhere is, is not going to be able to access it now if we go to our uh, uh, endpoints uh, and you guys can see that the endpoint is created uh, and it is uh, approved uh, and uh, uh, who has approved it's auto approved uh, now if i go back to uh, my vm uh, uh, that is also on the same virtual uh, network uh, and i go to the uh, CMD. Remember that before creating the endpoint, uh, when we did did the NS lookup, uh, this uh, was resolved to this uh, IP. Now we are going to do the same NS lookup, uh, and now it should resolve to 10.0.2.4. So now you can see that this uh, IP, this uh, our server, uh, now it belong to this uh, VNet. So the the same VNet our uh, VM belong to okay so that's how now this uh, server is not going to be accessible from any public network so but it will be accessible from the uh, same uh, v, v any vms uh, you know uh, or the resources which are on the same vnet so if i copy this thing uh, so let me go back here and uh, i'm going to go back to my server name and uh, i'm going to go ahead and copy and uh, then i go to the vm 
here I have one tool called the Azure Data Studio. I'm going to open that and connect to my uh, SQL database. So, so I'm going to type right there, close this, and the, here is a SQL login, TB user, and now here is going to ask me, hey, what is your password? So I have provided the password. And now it is connected. So you can see TechRes IT database is there. And uh, if I double click on that one, I will see some tables here. So EMP table. So I can uh, right click and say select top thousand or whatever. And this is going to show me some rows. So remember that we have inserted only one record. And uh, that's all it has. So only one record right there. So, yeah. Okay, so we were able to create our private endpoint uh, and uh, then uh, from the by using the same VNet, uh, uh, we are in the VM where we are able to access that uh, uh, database. So, so I'm going to do one more test for you guys. So if I go back here on the portal and in the portal, if I will try to go to the SQL databases and here uh, if I will try to access uh, by using query editor, uh, let's see what happened. So you are going to see some errors probably. So see right there, it's saying an instance specified error occurred while establishing a connection to the SQL server was denied from the public network. And last time, remember that when we had that, it asked me, hey, do you want to add the IP? And we did add the IP. But now, as we have created the private endpoint, it's not giving us that option to add that IP. Uh, that uh, public IP we can add and access it. And because it is saying deny public network access that's a rule it is using to connect to the server use the private endpoint from the inside your virtual network so and that's what you need to do or or other ways how to set up private link for azure database so, so you can do that so this is how you will be able to use the private end points uh, uh, in your uh, Azure services uh, uh, and uh, then uh, you will be able to connect uh, from different resources which are in the same uh, VNet. Uh, so in this case uh, what we did uh, we created the private endpoint uh, for our uh, Azure SQL database and we were able to access uh, uh, that uh, database uh, from the VM uh, that is on the same uh, VNet. Uh, so thank you very much for watching and I will see you guys uh, in next video.